A lot of you are probably already pretty firmly rooted as a dog person or a cat person. And I'll admit I've got my own biases, but when it comes down to it, which one do you think is easier to take care of? More intelligent, better for families with children? For some of these questions, there might be more than meets the eye. Welcome to Pet Spotlight. Today we're diving into some of the hottest debates around cats and dogs. Are dogs really man's best friend, or do cats have more advantages as pets? Get ready as we hit the most controversial takes. First, if you've had both dogs and cats before, which one do you think is smarter? Many cat lovers argue that felines have superior intelligence compared to canines. Scientific research shows that relative to their body size, cats actually have larger brains, which are associated with higher cognition, complex thinking, problem solving, and learning. For example, one study found that the frontal cortex, which is the area of the brain linked to intelligence, is bigger in cats than dogs. Cats also have more than double the number of brain cells in the cortex as dogs. This means that cats excel at tasks that test their mental abilities, like navigating puzzles and understanding cause and effect relationships. One reason researchers believe cats are so good at these complex tasks is because they needed these abilities to survive as solitary hunters in the wild. Now you could argue that dogs are more trainable and that makes them smarter, but really, Cats might just be too smart and disinterested in following our instructions. Dogs, on the other hand, our lovable goofballs, have evolved in a very unique way. They're extremely attuned to human social cues and behaviors thanks to centuries of domestication. They are incredibly emotionally intelligent, which gives them a leg up when it comes to being a good companion. One common criticism of dogs is that they're too needy compared to cats. It's true that dogs crave human interaction, petting, and affection due to their thousands of years of breeding as companion animals. Their needs might also simply demand more direct attention, like going for a walk to pee, needing meals served to them, or getting human-directed exercise. Cats, on the other hand, tend to show affection on their own terms. They have litter boxes and self-feeders. They don't usually go for walks. But on the other hand, I know I've had cats who were very pushy and needy when they wanted something. So while they're not as overtly attention-seeking, cats can still form strong bonds with their owners. And according to researchers, cats see their human caregivers as a source of safety and security. Cats will greet you at the door when you return home, curl up beside you on the couch, and sleep on your bed at night just like dogs because they feel attached to you. They just aren't as constantly dependent on human interaction as dogs are. I'll admit, this next hot take isn't all that controversial. Cats definitely seem to win out as cleaner and neater pets. Cat lovers point out that cats bury their waste in litter boxes and they groom themselves frequently, making them cleaner pets compared to dogs. Dogs certainly require more effort on the owner's part in terms of bathing, brushing, and cleaning up after bathroom breaks during the walk, but how neat a dog is really depends on the breed. There's some, like poodles, who are known to be very tidy with minimal fuss. And cats can also make their share of messes. Plus, you do still have to clean out that litter box. So while it's tough to argue for dogs being neater and cleaner, it can really come down to the individual personality of your pet. So then if you live in an apartment, is a cat the obvious better pet? Cats are often touted as better pets for apartments or small homes because they need less open space to roam around and get exercise. Cats are natural climbers and they can get stimulation from cat trees or perches and other vertical space. Dogs, on the other hand, require regular outdoor walks and room to run around, which can be tough in a small space. But I think if you're truly a dog person, you'd find a way to make it work with a dog. A lot of people do, after all. You can use the link at the top of the screen to check out another Pet Spotlight video on great dog breeds for apartment living. If you've had a dog in an apartment or another small space, let us know down in the comments how you have made it work. Now we've been picking on dogs for a while, I think it's time to talk about some of their strengths, like home security. First, a quick thank you for joining us, and if you like learning more about the latest science to help you understand your pets, please hit that like button and subscribe to Pet Spotlight. Okay, so let's set a scene. It's late at night, and you hear someone rustling around outside your window. Would you prefer a 70-pound German Shepherd or a 10-pound Tabby Cat next to your bed? Dogs have been domesticated into great guard animals and they provide a sense of security thanks to their territorial instincts, intimidating size, muscular build, and loud, ferocious bark. 
Even small dog breeds can work well for security. They might just be a better alarm system than actual physical protection. Are cats completely useless for protection though? While dogs may visibly deter intruders, cats can alert owners to danger as well with vocal cues. Some larger cat breeds like the Maine Coon can also look pretty intimidating themselves. Just check the news, there's plenty of stories of cats protecting their families and houses. For example, a few years ago, there was this story in Indiana where a cat helped scare off a potential intruder by attacking his hand as he reached through the front door. So maybe both types of animals offer some security in their own way. A lot of cat owners argue that they are lower maintenance pets given their independence. If your cat is trained to use a self-feeder and a water fountain, you could pretty easily leave them for a long weekend without a worry. Dogs obviously aren't that independent. They need to be boarded or visited by a house sitter or travel with you. But for dog lovers, these extra responsibilities are worthwhile for the fun, affectionate bond that you form through things like training, playing fetch, and cuddling on the couch. That additional care is just part of being a responsible pet owner. Check out this link at the top to our spotlight video on key ownership decisions. There's a lot of knowing yourself and understanding the expectations and needs of a dog, or a cat for that matter, before you dive in. So with all that extra attention required, are dogs still good pets for families and children? Speaking from experience, I find it pretty tough to beat growing up with a dog by your side. There's tons of dog breeds who make great pets for active families with children thanks to their playful nature, their patience with toddlers, and their enjoyment of outdoor activities and fetch. Even the biggest dogs can have a soft side for kids, especially ones who they view as part of their family or their pack. However, cats can be just as good for families and children if they're properly trained and socialized at a young age. The biggest issue is that cats prefer their space, independence, and they often want affection on their own terms. And space, independence, and respecting boundaries, let's be honest, they're not exactly strong suits for young children. But with supervision, those of you who have had pets along with kids know that you can definitely interact safely with both cats and dogs, or both. So here's one that might actually be a true controversy that's still raging today. Cats are hunters at heart, and cats who spend time outside are often known to terrorize the local wildlife. Some conservationists argue that we should ban outdoor cats entirely because they pose a risk to birds and wildlife through hunting, spreading diseases, and disrupting ecosystems. If you think about it, cats kind of are an invasive species that we bring into new environments where they didn't originally exist. So the argument goes that keeping cats confined indoors at all times would reduce these risks to the local ecology. Cats might be perfectly happy indoors if that's the way they were raised from kittenhood, but it's tough to keep a cat entertained if they're used to being able to roam outside. Some people have made enclosed areas that they've creatively named catios, or they'll use leashes for walks, good luck with that, or supervise them on a balcony or in the backyard to give cats some fresh air while trying to prevent harm to birds and wildlife. In our opinion, an outright ban on outdoor cats seems pretty extreme when there might be some compromises that exist. Let us know in the comments if you've got a take on this one. So, are you team dog or team cat? Whether you're a dog person or a cat person, none of this probably convinced you to change your mind, but I hope it's been fun. Thanks for joining us, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to Pet Spotlight for more pet-loving content.